Well, hello, model builders. Welcome to another Ford review. And today we're doing the 69 Shelby Mustang. This is a Ravel monogram kit. I built the older version of this. This is a uh, 1998 new tool release. And it's been uh, updated and re-released a few times. And I think the most recent version of this is actually a convertible. But it's the same kit. And the under carriage chassis uh, section of this kit is shared with the Boss 302 Mustang as well. So if you've built that kit, it's the same thing. You're going to find the same chassis and floor pan and that kind of thing. But we built this one. This was an eBay purchase. And uh, the interesting thing about this kit, I got it, it was completely, uh, completely new. All the parts were sealed in the bag. But the decal sheet had been cut and uh, the white decals had been taken from the kit. So it left me with uh, the tannish brownish uh, ones and the black ones. And uh, that's the only other two colors that you get. You don't get blue, so you couldn't do a white car. And so I struggled with what color I was going to paint it. And that's why this one is yellow, because it's about the only car that uses the black stripes. Wasn't real keen on it at first, but now that I have it done, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So we'll go over this and I'll give you the, the skinny on this thing. Uh, the positives and the negatives about uh, building this particular kit. Um, it is a Ravel monogram and it's a little bit more monogram than Ravel, which I think is a good thing. <laughs> and I'll uh, show you this car here as we spin it around. It actually uh, does make a pretty nice kit once it's finished but uh, some of the things as I was doing it I wasn't quite sure about so we'll review it here piece by piece and I'll be right back okay as you can see here in the box art illustration you can build this as a street machine with uh, two carbs and some uh, high-rise intake sticking through the hood. Um, those parts are included in the kit along with those uh, centerline style wheels and some pieces to jack the back of the car up and make it uh, a little bit more raked looking. But that's kind of the extent of the custom parts. There really isn't a whole lot beyond that. And I wanted to comment uh, on the decals. Not those horrible flame decals, but these are the stripe decals um, the remaining color. If, uh, if you don't have the white ones like I didn't and you're not keen to use the black ones, this is the other color choice. And this is really a brown. Um, hopefully it's showing up properly here with the camera. But this should be a light tan color. Um, these are actually um, pretty much a medium brown. And this color doesn't exist in the Shelby palette for stripes that I've seen. So these are pretty much useless unless you're going to do a custom color. So that's why this car wound up being yellow, because the only stripes I had were the black ones. And uh, I think I found one kind of turquoise green car maybe that had uh, black stripes in my internet research. But other than that, you're going to be building a yellow one. So here we go. The decals... Uh, were pretty good, um, went on pretty nicely, didn't have any trouble with those, um, and of course these were a little bit older, um, probably over 10 years old in this version of the kit that I have. But they went on really nice, and there are some detail decals under the hood that I'll show you here in a little bit. But there are no wood grain decals for the interior. Um, when I go to the, uh, I have a separate video section here I'll show you for the interior, but no decals for the wood grain on the interior, which I think they had for the Boss 302. So I don't know if the newer kits might have that, uh, if they don't offer that, and maybe in the convertible kit. But uh, that's something you're going to have to paint, uh, in my experience. The body shell, uh, pretty good. Really no complaints there. The side scoops, eh, they're a little, I don't know, they, just, they look a little odd to me. Like they aren't shaped quite right. The... Emblems on the sides here, on the fender and on the C pillar, those are on with they're 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 not much of a molding uh, in in the body for those. Very very light, uh, very easy to sand off if you're a guy that primes and primes and paints and sands in between coats like I am. So they are kind of an issue. I wish they would have given you decals for those, but they don't. 
Um, hood fits very good. It does come with the, uh, the separate chrome um, latches, which is nice. The scoops, except for the very center one, are all just molded in and you have to pick them out with paint. Uh, the rest of the body shell is pretty much like the Mustang Boss 302 that I built before. The tail light panel, you get clear uh, red plastic lenses there. And uh, that Shelby piece at the top is a chrome piece that you have to uh, do the blackout on. I had to uh, two-tone that rear lance because the tail light panel is part of that. So you got to paint that black. The license plate is a antique piece. That's a, an old auto world Deke, or license plate. Uh, sticky sticky bag license plate sheet that I that I still have. Uh, the only bad thing about those is they're all dated 1961, so I had to pick one that didn't really show the show the year. But uh, that's the exterior. You have separate body colored mirrors. The door handles are molded in. Really pretty nice stuff. Um, the front grille is a real bugger to paint. That has to be black. And it doesn't. It only has that chrome molding really visible. It's kind of a hairy thing to paint. It's it's pretty deeply recessed, and um, your simple blackout wash uh, on the chrome actually won't, won't be correct. You actually have to black black that thing. So that's not. And you know, even here, you can see there's still some chrome shine coming through. So if you're trying to go for accuracy of the real thing, that's going to be a little bit of a of a job. Um, the Lucas fog lights actually are really nice. Um, the turn signals are chrome pieces, so you got to paint those with the amber paint. The front and rear valances, um, the front one fits pretty good. There is a problem with fitment at the front. The, uh, the frame portion will want to touch of the front valance there. So you have to try to trim that away probably. And the rear, though I got a decent fit on it, is a real pain in the butt to put in. Um, and I had the same problem with the Boss 302 that uh, it just didn't wanna, didn't wanna cooperate. It's like a three-handed operation really to do that. So those are you know, still a challenge. Um, I mean, the fit may not look so great on the front one here on the camera as I'm, as I'm spinning this, but it's actually not bad. Um, this just tends to enhance, enhance errors. So I'm going to cut here and uh, show you the interior, which I filmed earlier while I had to cut apart, and then we'll come back. Here's a shot of the interior in the uh, chassis separate from the body. I took this, obviously, before I finished assembly. Um, as I wanted to show this interior, it's got a lot of nice detail that probably you're not going to see, at least in the camera, when it's completely finished. The uh, door panels are, are pretty nicely done. You can pick those out. It's curious that there's no decals, um, at least in this offering for the, the wood grain. They do have it for the, uh, the newer stuff. I think the Boss 302 had decals in there. The dash detail is not bad. Um, the instrument numbers and so forth are a little, little weak maybe to pick out with paint. The shifter is an odd T-handle style. I'm not sure that's... I guess it's accurate. I didn't really see any of those in the photos I was using for reference. But the interior tub and detail is really pretty nice, gotta, gotta say. I was pretty happy with that. And then the engine, um, and yes, I realize I have to fix that one valve cover. Um, engine's really nice. It's uh, probably one of the nicer, nicer engines I've done lately. Uh, really good big block FE Ford. Good detail on the heads. The carburetor's two pieces. Really nice Holly carburetor. So it uh, winds up making a real nice engine. 
So just wanted to do that quick before final assembly so you could see some of the detail there. It is a one-piece tub. Um, I sprayed it flat white and then uh, hand painted the black in there, which turned out pretty good. Um, I didn't want to do another black interior as I probably mentioned elsewhere in the video. But uh, there you have it. All right, and a quick deep dive into the engine bay. And here you can see some of those uh, detail decals. There's uh, decals for the battery and for the fan shroud and the air cleaner. Even get one, a little one on the side there. One of my criticisms with this kit is the what you get here when you look down in between the radiator support and the grill. There's a lot of what I would call obvious model kitness showing there. Um, that's kind of a negative. But that's the main detraction here in the engine bay. The rest of it's really nice. That That is a really nice Ford FE 428. Very nicely detailed. It's got a really nice uh, master cylinder that goes in the firewall. Separate distributor with vacuum advance. Nice valve covers, nice manifolds. Really nothing to complain about there. It does have an upper radiator hose, does not have a lower. And from the uh, research photos I had, it all looks looks really nice, really accurate. And we'll turn it uh, upside down for you. And the underside is standard Ravel Monogram Mustang. As I said, it's the same as the Boss 302 under here. The only difference is the exhaust system at the back because of the Shelby has the center exit exhaust. There's a different system there. But it uses the same uh, shock absorbers, uh, rear axle and differential and drive shaft is all one piece. The uh, It's got this curious separate body tub and floor pan arrangement. But what it does is it gives you a nice th um, three-dimensional look of these frame rails by doing that. So that's kind of cool. And if you pick out some of the details there with some paint, it, uh, it winds up not looking too bad. So, pretty good. Not spectacular, but pretty good. So overall, a nice kit. Uh, really don't have any major complaints with it. If you're into the Shelby thing, this is a uh, kind of an unusual kit. I mean, uh, most of the Shelbys that we see, of course, are the earlier cars. So it was really nice of them to come out with this. And it has enough of the right details, I think, that uh, you can make a really nice, accurate car. Um, these came in a lot of unusual colors, too. So if you're uh, a little bit more creative with your paint searching than I was by going to the local hardware store, you can uh, come up with some really neat uh, color schemes. I just wish the decal sheet had the proper tan decals, because I think that would have made, uh, made for a, nice, a nicer car. I could have done something other than this yellow, but this yellow comes out pretty nice. Um, now that I'm done with it, I'm, re I'm really happy with it being yellow. So, Anyway, that's a very quick uh, review of this kit. If you, if you want to see more, check out the Boss 302 or any of my other Ford Mustang model kit reviews. Thanks for watching.